Massive stone towers pierce an empty sky. This enormous structure is called the cage. In its shadow, a lone girl walks with purpose. And she will not leave until she has what she desires. Who's finally up? Oh dear. So you did lose your voice after all. Don't worry. Mama's here to help. This way. You've lost more than just your voice. But I'm sure you already know that, don't you? You've lost so much. But the time has come to reclaim it.
Life will be much harder if you can't speak, after all. These stairs are the entrance to your prison. A place known as the Cage. It's a truly massive structure. Where you woke up, and this sandy area here, are just small parts of it. This place is called... The Cage? And now, the moment you've been waiting for, dream time! How annoying. We all live under someone else's command. Our bodies and emotions are not free. One often lacks the will to choose from the remaining options. These feelings, they're all real. But my reality wasn't. I just wanted happiness. Normal happiness. meaning of the word never existed to begin with we don't have time to deal with gods right now i am a different man now it's something i want to do i won't stop until i've destroyed them all sear this into your mind i can destroy the flowers with this what is your anger meant for i'll kill them all <laughs> let's go we have a final fragment to reclaim Goodness, look at these rivers of sand. I wonder how such a thing came to pass. Make sure you don't get any grit in your eyes. I wonder where all of this sand is going. Let's head for the shiny black light up there. These strange statues are scattered throughout the cage. I don't know who made them, but I call them Dark Scarecrows. Anyway, this is the first one, so we'll start here. of good upbringing moves across a vast wasteland. A taciturn man follows. The boy proceeds uneasily, his eyes constantly probing their surroundings, almost as if he fears they are being followed. Suddenly, a dreary town emerges from the dust. The boy suggests they take their rest, and the man nods silently.
the two make for a nearby eatery, hoping to shake the road from their weary bones. But instead of welcome, they find a group of bounty hunters gathered at their destination. The lead hunter stares at the child, appraising him. You royalty, boy? His voice is rad. The boy remains silent, his head hanging low. Perhaps angered by the lack of response, the bounty hunter suddenly draws his gun. Two shots ring out and fade into the dusk. Did you see the flock of black birds that possessed the bounty hunter? They're nasty sorts who like to fly in and warp the story. Well, we are not going to let that stand, are we? Your role is to defeat them and put the story back the way it's supposed to be. But I suppose you already know that, don't you? Perhaps angered by the lack of response, the bounty hunter suddenly draws his gun. Having defeated the hunters, the man turns to his charge. Are you hurt, my prince? I am well, replies the boy. But remember, I am no longer a prince. With a wry smile and a touch of regret, he proposes they take their leave of the town. The man silently nods and gazes upon the boy's face. Your task is to fix warped memories like this in order to restore complete stories. But we also need to collect weapons like these. Do you have a rough sense of what you're supposed to do now, child? Wonderful. Then let's keep this up. Also, Mama's here to help. So don't worry too much about it, all right? My, what a beautiful place. I can't fathom how anyone managed to construct something so large. Well, here's the second one. Are you ready? Wherever people gather, Stories come with them. But saloons have a special ability to loosen even the tightest of lips. Such rumors are what brings the woman with the mechanical arm and leg to this place. For she is a bounty hunter in search of her prey.
The information she obtains from the patron seems vague, but it is more than enough. Gathering herself, she exits the saloon in pursuit of her target. and foul, his eyes a pair of tiny beads. Give me all your money, he howls. It is over in a moment. The woman's sigh is carried off by the wind. No mediocre highwayman could hope to stand against her desire for revenge. The woman heads for the forest in pursuit of her target. We collect stories in order to regain what you have lost. But we also do it to make your wish come true. So let's keep it up. Slow and steady wins this race. I should tell you a little bit about the cage. It's a truly massive structure. Where you woke up, and this sandy area here, are just small parts of it. To be honest, a great deal of the cage is a mystery. I'm not even certain who gave it that name. surveys his surroundings. It would appear he is searching for food. The expression on his bandaged face is clouded. The grasses rustle ominously as they part. It seems the man is not the only one in search of food. The animals in this place are lean, starving, desperate. And they will do what they must to survive. Secured his prize, the man returns to the church. The sound of his worn boot heels echoes throughout the dilapidated chapel. A boy lies at the back his face drawn and haggard. The man kneels down and offers some of the food he collected. 
but the boy is too weak to hold it. His body will not allow him to accept even this meager meal. The boy tries to brush it off with a feeble smile, but the man just stares down at him in silence. To think that poor sick child had to travel the wastes in his condition. Still, we've restored the third memory now. If we can collect the next one, it will mark the end of the staff's tale. Goodness, this place is nothing but stairs. I hope your little legs are okay. Still, I suppose it does allow us to see some rather lovely views. Be sure to rest whenever you start to feel tired, child. Someone once said resting is the shortcut to success after all. It's so bright here. Ah, there's the fourth one. We should be able to enter the final memory here. People who arm themselves tend to find their way into a fight. I fear you will have to face a good deal of death from now on. Are you ready? The woman who set out from town finally arrives at a wild wood. Soon, she comes across the ruins of a once proud church. The ceiling has collapsed, the walls mere suggestions. But in the very back of the church, she finds a deteriorated clockwork soldier, as well as the corpse of a boy. As the woman approaches, the clockwork soldier suddenly rises. He levels his weapon at her and lets fly with a fearsome howl. The woman accesses the logs of the fallen soldier. The boy was a prince, driven from his kingdom. The clockwork soldier traveling with him was his guardian and his friend. But alas, the boy's disease worsened and he perished. Now alone, the man remained behind continued to safeguard his charge, killing any who dared approach the body. For a hundred years, the man stood watch, their kingdom fallen, his body rust, his mind shadow. Yet still he remained to protect his friend. The woman builds a grave to mourn the pair, and leaves the forest without a word.
He was a prince who was driven away from his own country. And before breaking down, the machine tried so hard to guard his master's body. <sighs> this memory marks the end of the story they left behind inside this staff. Well done, child. Do you see how the proper story is now stored inside the staff? That is Will, one of the lost fragments that you should be collecting. Up the stairs now. We still have a long way to go. The road splits here. Mama thinks we should go right, because it's the right way. Hmm, but left also might be the right way. If it wasn't clear by now, Mama doesn't actually know. Oh, this weapon is... Anyway. Let's get started on its restoration, shall we? I wonder what kind of story we'll find this time. Once, two sisters with lovely ebon hair lived in a lush and verdant land. They hunted for food in the forest and did their best to each support the other. The elder sister had been born in the woods and was an archer of rare skill. When their parents died, she began teaching the younger how to hunt. The younger looks up to her and wants so badly to test out her new skills. This thought fills the older sister with warmth as she follows after her sibling. Suddenly, the elder sibling hears a beast cry out in the direction of her little sister. She sets off after her at a frantic pace. The savage beast looms over the prone girl and makes to attack. As an arrow penetrates the beast's tender flesh, it turns tail and flees. There was no way her little sister could have taken down the massive creature alone. Trying to calm her, 
the woman removes her silver hairpin and places it on her sister. It is a keepsake of their mother, one the young girl has long desired. Thanks, sis, she says, beaming. Next time, it'll be my turn to protect you. This weapon is all about that woman. I feel like we've seen her somewhere before. What could this black barrier be? How can the enemy be acting outside of the scarecrows? Well, let's just square them away as best we can as we go forward. Okay? What on earth could those dark creatures be after? I'm sorry, child. There are just so many things that Mama doesn't know. Look, something's out there. What could it be? There are so many mysteries in the cage, aren't there? This second Scarecrow will hold another part of the weapon's memory. Done with their hunting. The black-haired sisters decide to return home before dusk. The younger has caught a small bunny, and the elder a large boar. It is a typical day of hunting for the pair. disaster when they come to the hill that overlooks the town. Flames billow forth, and the chilling snaps of distant gunfire can be heard. The woman immediately thinks of the war that is raging in the neighboring nation. She tells her sister to stay put, and goes to see what has happened for herself. The town is oddly still, save for the incessant crackle of flames. The woman gasps as she takes in the grisly sight before her. All she can see are bodies. 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 After defeating the soldier, she hears a voice. Her worried sister has followed her into the fires of the village. Enemy soldiers cry out all around them.
As the woman feared, the war from the nearby nation has finally found them. Strange and fearsome men surround them on all sides. Impact. Heat. Pain. Her little sister screams. As the woman's consciousness flickers out, two words from a soldier reach her ears. Sort them. I see. This weapon speaks of war. I suppose it's rare for the memories in these weapons to be peaceful ones. That's a little sad. This room is a bit strange, isn't it? Can you see down there? There are so many paths going every which way. It's like a maze. I wonder where the other paths lead. black-haired woman regains consciousness in a world enveloped by haze. She hears a faint voice. It sounds similar to her little sister's voice, but also different. Wrong. My sister. I have to save my sister. The woman's dim memories slowly become clear. The blow she'd taken, her sister screaming, the soldier's words. Her only sister, her only family. She must save her. As she runs, the woman's world is enveloped in a shimmering wall of white. When the woman wakes anew, she is lying on the floor of an unfamiliar prison. Something is terribly wrong. She looks down at her body and stifles a gasp. One arm and one leg have been replaced by mechanical substitutes. And her black hair is now as white as snow. Where is my sister? She dashes off through the dim prison in search of her missing sibling. She dispatches both her cell door and its guard with equal ease. Only then does she realize the truth. Her body is now a terrible weapon. As this knowledge sinks in, darkness envelops her.
when she interrogates the dying guard about her sister. He grins madly and says, Our kingdom will invade all. Every country will bend the knee to our might. Then we'll experiment on the survivors and turn them into beautiful killing machines. Oh yes, they will be sorted. With these final words, the soldier dies. The woman begins to run. Don't think about it. Don't think about it. Don't think about it. She repeats the mantra as she runs, praying that somehow her sister has escaped this fate. her arm and leg because of her dark past. Looks like that monster ran off somewhere. Anyway, the next memory we find will be the last for this part of the cage. We're almost there, child. Just keep going. As the woman exits her prison, she beholds a town stained red with both flame and blood. She is in a strange land, one she does not recognize. But she must find her sister. The woman runs and runs and runs. She dashes toward the sound. The thing standing before her was once her sister. But now, all trace of her former self has been lost to the sorting. Her transformed little sister trembles, as if trying to remember something. The 
The moment her sister is cut down in front of her, the woman loses all control. Even when her enemies are no more than mangled hunks of flesh, she cannot stop. Finally, the woman cradles her sister in her arms and gazes at her blood-stained face. Their hair, once dark as night itself, was now pure white. Yet the hairpin still glinted from atop the sister's head. The woman was alone, her fate was sealed, and so she swore a vow to her sister. The fires of her revenge would rage until they consumed the entire kingdom. People need goals and hopes in order to live their lives. And for her, revenge was itself a form of hope. spirit of desire and the drive to move forward. There are still many things you need to reclaim. Come now, the next fragment is waiting for you. What are those things up ahead? Oh my, bird statues. Oh, it broke. I do hope no one saw that. building is so big, it's just like a castle. Let's fix the memory in the Scarecrow and then invite ourselves in, shall we? This gun. Anyway, let's get started restoring this story, shall we? soldier sleeps amidst the detritus of a castle storehouse. Time has no meaning here. A minute is as an age. Until the day he meets the boy. Exhausted boy can only mutter three simple words. Let me rest. Seeking to help, the man begins rooting around to prepare a makeshift bed.
As he continues to dig, a discarded weapon suddenly activates. The man manages to assemble a crude resting place from the storehouse junk. The boy wearily makes his way to the bed and manages a heartfelt thanks. After studying the man for a moment, he begins to ask him questions. The name the man gives is that of the first model of clockwork soldiers. I was also a first once, says the boy. First in line to the throne, but no more. The man explains he was unable to carry out orders and discarded as defective. The boy responds that as his disease has grown worse, he too has been cast aside. You and I are much alike says the boy with a sad smile. Weary of talking, the boy finally falls asleep. The man simply sits, keeping the boy's peaceful expression in the corner of his eye. This is the story of a gun-wielding mechanical soldier. I suppose these are memories of when he first met the boy with the staff. Well then, let's head over to the castle. This isn't a terribly welcoming atmosphere. It's the privilege of youth to move forward by breaking everything in your path. It would be much easier if we could just crash through those awful black barriers. Now this is an odd room. Well, let's keep going. It's a waterfall of sand. Looks like the path goes through it. Maybe there's a way to stop the flow. Is that a... switch? The sand stopped! Oh, how lovely! Now we can move past it. There's a switch here, too. Give it a push. This one opens up the first path. How clever! The path is open now. you, Mr. Scarecrow. Let's get to restoring this memory. The 
The cold room burdens the boy, and his condition worsens. A man looks about and sees what appears to be a bottle of medicine. But upon taking it in hand and looking at the label, he realizes it is actually a weapon of poison gas. The man continues to search for medicine that might aid the boy. It seems the storehouse expands beyond the junk pile pressed against the wall. He retrieves a bottle from the shelf, and returns to the bed where the boy waits. The boy looks at the man's gift, and chuckles. Empty bottles won't cure me, I'm afraid, he says as the man stares at him blankly. Still says the boy. He suddenly stands, as if a thought has come to mind. The boy places a candle in the bottle, turning it into a small lamp. He then begins to sing in a small, quiet voice. By the power of his will does the hero draw his sword. To stop the mean advances of the darkness in the world. He will use this light to lead away the people from fear's horde. It is the song of a hero who challenges evil in order to save his people. The lamp flickers warmly as the man thinks. Thank you, he says finally. Those words should not have existed in the man, and yet somehow they did. The boy's shocked stare slowly becomes a smile, bright enough to last a lifetime. In the corner of a frigid room, these two companions are comforted by the same warmth. Imagine you're getting used to this by now. Wonderful. Let's keep it up. These stairs look terribly unsafe. It does seem like an effective way to keep intruders out, though. The cage is just filled with mysteries, isn't it? Oh, that's... It's the monster that attacked us earlier. Are you going to chase it? It's calling to us. Hmm. It's not here. Well, 
Let's take care of the Scarecrow for now. Soldiers' voices drift in from outside. The kingdom has once again declared war. The boy looks at the man and opens his heart. He once lacked the courage to stand against his father and had stayed complicit. But now he burns to stop the king and protect his people from the horrors of war. The passion in his eyes is evident. The man breaks through the door, and the boy follows after. As a divine light shines behind him, the king glares down at the two interlopers. In a bold voice, the boy shouts up at the king. By my name as the firstborn, I propose this war be ended. In that moment, he is just like the hero of his song. With a sneer, the king looks to the clockwork soldier and says, The man freezes, but he cannot disobey his master, for that is how he was programmed. With a shaking hand, he readies his gun. The boy stares straight at the man from the end of the barrel. Unable to resist his orders, the man's finger hovers over the trigger. In a final, desperate move, the man shuts down his own motor circuits. His finger lets go of the trigger, and he falls to his knees before the boy. It is the first time he has resisted orders of his own volition. All to save the boy. With an animalistic cry, the king rises up before the pair. The king's roar brings soldiers running as he demands they tear the traitors apart. The man seizes the boy's hand, and they begin to run from the castle. For the first time in his existence, the man finally has a will of his own.
So that's why that poor child was driven from his country. The king wished for control, while the prince prayed for peace and happiness. They were both thinking of their country. So why did it have to end up so? Why is there a person in a place like this? Excuse me, miss. Well, I've been waiting here for a really long time. But my mommy still hasn't come. Oh, I miss my mommy so much, and I was hoping you could put me in that scarecrow like you did with Mr. Monster. I'm sorry. Mama can't help you. Let's be off. from the story. I feel terrible, but there's nothing we can do for him. We must be careful not to end up lost like him. It seemed like that old man knew about you and the monster. And he spoke like a child. I wonder what happened to him. This is the last part of the Mechanical Soldier's story. Let's see how the memory ends, shall we? The escapees arrive at the town outside the castle, and find people in a panic over the impending war. Somehow, the two managed to escape beyond the borders of the kingdom. Looking back on their former home, they each make an oath. The boy swears to travel the nation as its prince, and bring an end to the war. While the man promises to guard the prince until his dying moment. Together, they will sever the marionette strings the kingdom has bound them to. With determination in their hearts, they take their first steps into the future. They both fought. The boy for peace, and the machine for him. That must be how their memories were intertwined. This is the third fragment. Prayer. 
of all emotions. I believe this one might be especially human. It is a heart that fills in the blanks of a vague future. Well, do you feel anything different? My, that's wonderful. Let's keep this up and get those fragments back. Then your wish can come true too. It's been awful and dusty for the most part, but the air here is nice and clear. Do you see that? The air is so clear here, fish even swim in it. Hmm, that's actually quite odd now that I think about it. Looks like we've found our first memory in this area. Oh my, this looks like a katana. Maybe we'll hear a story about a samurai. Let's have a look, shall we? sits alone. Though he speaks, the target of his words is unseen. To this invisible listener, he offers praise for a task well handled. His eyes narrow. He hesitates. Then, his voice a rasp, he murmurs an instruction. On to the next. The target of his words is revealed behind the scrim of a dividing wall. She also sits alone. In her hand rests a small scroll adorned with a face. Slipping the scroll into the folds of her robe, she stands and makes her response. Understood. against an ominous sky. The castle town bustles as people move to and fro. A family traveling the road catches her eye. The child smiles brightly, her eyes sparkling. The darkness of the woman's own life could never know such pleasant light. Brushing aside her melancholy, she makes to leave town. A sudden glimpse of silver catches the woman's eye as an assassin appears before her. A thin razor of a smile crosses her face. She knows this is exactly where she belongs.
She claims the assassin's life before body can meet Earth. In the silence that follows, she muses on her life. She walks a path of blood, a solitary path far from family or comfort. Had she ever smiled as that child did? Could she? Such thoughts swirl in her mind as the woman considers a life she knows she will never have. Well? I wonder what the secret to her strength is. Do they just want to slow our progress? Or is there some deeper goal? Sometimes I wonder what those dark foes are trying to accomplish. My, that's a large gate. We certainly won't be able to lift this on our own. What a good eye you have. Here, let Mama take care of that for you. There now, that wasn't so hard. Collapsed bridge? Oh dear. The Scarecrow is so close. There must be a way to get past this. Wait here, child. Mama will take a quick peek around. Oh, but this is a bother. Who even lowered the water in the first place? I do wish these levers weren't quite so heavy. Right then. One down and three to go. I think our mission is going quite well so far. I just hope those two find happiness. Wonderful. That did the trick. Now we can cross to the other side. That certainly did take a lot of time. 
Well, let's get back on our feet and continue with the restoration, shall we? The girl stirs from a thin sleep, her features weary as a woman thrice her years. Her life is an unending blur of training that continues without mercy or pause. Bones creak, flesh stings, pain is her constant companion. Yet she forces herself down the hall all the same. When she arrives at the garden, a bellowing roar orders her forward. Coming, she replies in a voice devoid of all feeling. She readies an apology for her tardiness, knowing full well it will not be heard. As suspected, the man cuts off her words and begins to berate her without pause. You will learn to honor punctuality, girl. You are a tool of our master, and a tool is of no use if it is not present when needed. Thus begins another day of the girl's deadly training. Her family has served their lord's clan for generations. When the lord decides an enemy needs to die, her family carries out the sentence. Her path had been laid before she was even born. The path of a trained killer. There is no freedom for her. No thought of a different way. The path simply was. The woman does not bemoan her fate, for she has never known another. Yet, when she thinks of the things she will never have, she feels a terrible sadness. But she presses on regardless, leaving such distractions behind. At some point, she realizes that rain has begun to fall. Through the droplets, she spies a castle with a dark and enigmatic aura. Soon she finds a lone guard standing before a gate. Moving without sound, she loses her sword. With death delivered, she sheathes her blade and presses on. It's rather a tragedy, don't you think? I'm sure you must have a birthplace as well. A place you... Do you hear that? That's... It escaped again. What's that sound? Oh, the stairs. 
spiders make music when you step on them. Do you think that monster was playing the steps? That's a rather cute thing to do, don't you think? The woman moves ever deeper into the castle in search of her target. Her mission is to kill the son of an enemy lord and halt his possible succession. The enemy army values blood. If the successor were to die, chaos will inevitably follow. Slaying the sun will create confusion, giving her own lord an opening for attack. She passes through the corridors and moves toward a reception room. Outside, the rain falls in endless gray sheets. A child sits alone, his frame made smaller by the size of the room. She recognizes the boy's face from her scroll. Without a word, she draws her sword and points the tip at the child's throat. Yet he simply stares at the cold steel, making no move to escape. As the woman studies the child's haggard face, she realizes something. This is no son of a lord, but instead a girl frocked in boy's clothing. The woman asks her target why this is. As if a dam has burst, the girl suddenly lets fly with a torrent of grievance. I wish this house and this entire nation would fall. The girl begins to tell her tale. I am not but a puppet who dances at my father's tomb. I'm no child to him, merely a tool to be used. I even denied my own heart and took false gender in order to fulfill my role. And as this house's tool, I live only to be killed. So please, just bring this to pass. End me. The girl's eyes turn to rest on the woman. This is who I used to be. Set to walk a path before I had even drawn breath. The woman's sword wavers. Her hand hesitates. Outside, the rain falls as if it was trying to blot out the very earth itself. And yet somehow, it feels quiet. The next memory should be the last one in this area. I wonder what that monster wants, and those other dark foes for that matter.
I think the last scarecrow in this area is inside this building. Oh my! Again! What terrible timing these things have. Mama will open this. There. Can you get through now? This next memory should restore the weapon. The Scarecrow is right there. Brave faces now. The only sound is the rain. A long moment passes. The woman sheathes her blade. She then asks the bewildered girl, Did you mean it when you said you wish your house would fall? Shaking, the girl nods. The woman responds, Understood. Suddenly, the sounds of an army clattering into place emerge behind them. A score of soldiers bursts into the reception room. The woman's face is the very picture of composure. Come then, she whispers. The girl runs over and takes her hand. Why had she done this? The sound of the rain begins to fade. People cannot choose the station of their birth. One can scarcely even choose their own manner of death in this violent, bleeding world. But perhaps one can choose to let another live. I was a tool of my house who carried out her role. My hands are stained with sins beyond counting. I doubt this will absolve me of my actions, but it might make a nice gift to bring with me into hell. She can no longer hear the rain. Tears roll down the girl's cheeks, and on the woman's face is something almost like a smile. Perhaps freedom, in the truest meaning of the word, never existed to begin with. We are bound by heavy chains, which closes many doors, and one often lacks the will to choose from the remaining options. This is the fourth fragment that you've lost. What is your anger meant for? Is it for a person? The world? Your fate? Or perhaps... yourself?
The time when you will also have to choose draws nearer. It's so cold all of a sudden. Is this snow that's falling? Even the cage has varying weather, it seems. Why, even that fabric is frozen over. I never thought I'd get to see such a beautiful sight. Mama is truly touched. The fifth weapon should be here. As well as the fifth fragment. Now, let's head for the Dark Scarecrow. in a set of steady white puffs. Before long, the sun begins to set. Yet the man's pace does not falter. A rift in the ground blocks his way. The crevice is so deep, he cannot see the bottom. The man produces his trusty hand axe from within a deep pocket. The path beneath him precarious. Maintaining his balance is a matter of life and death. Once he moves past the danger, he again makes for the peak. Before he realizes it, the land around him is bathed in moonlight. The man knows the mountain is more dangerous at night. Yet it still holds for him a kind of wondrous charm. He does not fear this place. Instead, he trusts in his strength and experience. Suddenly, a steely glint of animal eyes glimmer all around him. The man, remaining calm, confronts a pack of wolves. Don't run. Don't turn away. Don't look them in the eye. 
the final war sounds. After fending off the wolves, the man renews his trek. No person has ever reached the summit of the mountain he now climbs. Yet he does not fear, for he has conquered many peaks long thought impossible. He forever seeks the line between life and death within the harshest environments. This pursuit is his entire reason for living. So this memory is from an adventurer. He certainly looked strong, don't you think? I've never climbed a mountain before. Uh, not that I could, seeing as my legs don't touch the ground. Those dark foes feel the cold at all. Are you cold, child? Why, you don't even have mittens. Well then, come here and let Mama warm you up. All right then. Mama will be quiet. A terrible blizzard rages across the snowy mountain. The merciless wind and snow cause his steps to slow. Suddenly, his weary eyes glimpse a rocky shelter, just big enough for a single man. As he catches his breath, he recalls the letter tucked away inside his pocket. His daughter had given it to him before he started his climb. He fishes in his deep pocket once more and produces a handmade charm. The oddly shaped decoration seems to warm the man from somewhere deep inside. Having risen to his feet, the man's legs are filled with renewed strength. Halfway up the mountain, he comes across a frozen lake. The corpse on the ground wears the attire of a mountaineer. and its regrets suddenly take form as a ghost and spread a terrible darkness. He sees a note on the ground next to the body. It is an apology to the mountaineer's family. It spells out his regret at ever attempting his climb. The note is written in a cramped, unsteady hand. 
Perhaps it is due to cold. Perhaps to grief. to be quiet, but I just can't. Make sure not to slip on the snow now. This is turning into a proper blizzard. We should hurry. It's trying to tell us something. My, but that was close. Be sure to take it slowly and watch your step, okay? I see another scarecrow. That's the third one. Let's get this done. This cliff looms before the man. If he can conquer this, the mountain will be his. his numb fists, he whispers encouraging words to himself. frozen body threatens to rebel, he finally reaches the summit. And though the mountain has supposedly never been climbed, he finds a ruined shrine. Intrigued by this mysterious sight, the man ventures onward.
When he enters the shrine, he finds something impossible. His wife. Why did you leave him? The baby is coming. He rubs his eyes and looks at the woman again. What he thought was his wife is in fact the frozen corpse of another pregnant woman. charm in one frozen hand. It looks just like the one his own daughter gave him. Enough. Time to go. The hallucination solidifies his resolution to return home to his family. his pregnant wife to climb a mountain? What an awful man. This fabric has frozen, turning it into a bridge. Be careful not to slip. I hear it's best to stay calm and take small steps. Also, lean forward and firmly plant your foot when... Are you listening to me? The blizzard has calmed somewhat, hasn't it? Once we restore the next memory, we can leave this snowy area. It's pretty, but it makes it hard to see or keep your balance. No matter how lovely it is, I wouldn't want to be out here for too long. Oh dear. It's a ramp. Will we be alright? My poor bum is frozen. Still, that was great fun. Perhaps we'll come back here sometime. Let us enter the spear's final memory. I wonder if the adventurer manages to get home safely. A lonely house, illuminated by a dim light, sits in a forest of deep snow.
suddenly, a furious knocking batters at the door. open to reveal an aberration that looks strangely like the girl's father. It seems the knock was but a trick of the wind. is about to be brought into the world. The man is in darkness. Pain courses through a body that struggles to follow the orders of its mind. With each movement he makes, his arms and legs grow heavier. As the cold sets into his bones, he comes to a sudden realization. Ah, oh, I see. I am already gone. He fumbles frozen, unfeeling fingers into his pocket one last time. The charm from his daughter still retains a tiny coal of warmth. With the sensation of his family at his fingertips, he slowly closes his eyes. His family was an illusion. No matter how strong we are, we cannot live alone. That man's story was so terribly sad. It seems grief waits for everyone at some point in our lives. Yet there are times we have no choice but to keep moving forward. That's why you've come all this way, isn't it? Let's go. We have a final fragment to reclaim. This is the final stop on your journey. The time has come to restore the final memory.
We will regain all that you have lost, so that we might fulfill your wish. Your memories are engraved in this scarecrow. Let us begin. I know it's painful, but let's keep... These memories are deeply entangled with you. Restoring them will not be easy. Do 
you know what that monster is. It is a creature who steals and eats human dreams for want of their form. But perhaps you know more about that than I do. Let us search for the next Scarecrow and memory. Do you remember how to use this terminal? You came through here with her once, didn't you? This is the second memory. Are you ready?
Are you all right? Like I said before, the more we restore, the deeper your pain will grow. attacks grow ever more vehement. path has been cut off. Though even if the path was there, there's no going back. restoring all of these memories, I will ask you one more time. So prepare yourself for that moment, all right?
Can you still walk? All right. Regardless of what you choose, the next memory will be the last. Let's get a move on. Restoring the tale of what you have done is penance for your sins. But soon, that too will come to an end. Will you realize your wish? Or... This is the last, truly and well, the last memory. The moment you complete this restoration, you will regain all you have lost. And there, you will find your sins waiting.
That is the final piece, speech. Now you have regained all that you lost. Now you must choose. Will you become human? Or... Tell me, child, what is it you truly wish for? Yes, my good sir. How may I help? Please proceed down this path, Master Lavania.
Master Lavania descended upon this world from a... I'm having another scary dream. <laughs> that was when I met the girl in white. There was no way for me to know if this was simply a coincidence or planned inevitability. Not that I was interested. Search for human dreams, eat them, and become human myself. That instinct is all that drives me. The girl cried about how she had nightmares every night, and said she wanted me to eat her dreams. So you'll be devouring this girl's dreams, yes? And then you'll become human. How delightful! Oh, it's almost morning. My name's Theo, by the way. See you tomorrow, Mr. Monster. fortuitous to have found someone freely willing to provide their dreams. I think things will be quite busy from here on out. Oh my, yes. I believe it is now night in that world. The slumbering young miss will soon arrive. Right then, here we go! Welcome to the cage, young miss. It is the world connected to your dreams. This place is called... the cage? Indeed it is. Wow! Mr. Monster, you're back! You're gonna eat my dreams like you promised, right? Now then, if you would both please proceed forward. To think we would so quickly find a client whose interests match our own. A fine outcome for all concerned, says I. I shall explain all you need to know as we make our way. Soonest begun, soonest done, eh? <laughs> Let us be off. This is way nicer than the place where I was locked up. Yes, an elevator! We truly do have all the modern amenities here! What 
What's that? A dark scarecrow, though I am uncertain who first gave them that moniker. Scarecrow is my scary dream? Uh, not exactly. Although they are similar in a number of respects. Take care of my dreams, Mr. Monster. shopping mall, a common sight, a family, a common sight. Though seemingly mundane, these are truly the most blessed and rare of days. Thankful for the gift of routine, the couple enjoys their ordinary lives. begins to tremble as screams erupt from outside the shopping mall. There, poised to attack their child is what appears to be a massive flower. A nightmare. One that repeats time and again and leads back to a reality of despair. His wife's eyes are dim pools filled with resignation, misery, and loss but they have sworn to enact revenge on the flowers. It is the only thing that keeps him moving forward. In order to eat the girl's dreams, we must first restore these memories, which happen to be her dream's original forms. Anytime we find one of these dark scarecrows, we should proceed with its restoration post-haste. What's my dream about? I fear it was a horrid tale of flower monsters that kill people. 
Uh, fret not. When you wake, you will remember nothing of these terrible visions. Dark foes have encroached on the cage. We cannot permit them to affect the dreams, so let us square them away. Dreams are always so scary. I don't know the people in them, but they all get hurt or die. Hmm, yes. You appear to be a human particularly suited for this world. Perhaps these memories from across space and time play out as dreams to you. I didn't understand most of that, but, um, okay. The announcement comes at the same time every day. It notifies those in white of meal times. As ever, the man dutifully makes for the feeding hall. The white marks him and all others who wear it as people without freedom. The rules must be obeyed. As the woman tries to escape, the hue in her eyes changes from unease to madness. Actions and thoughts of the prisoners in white are not theirs to control. through the facility, 
announcing the arrival of the flowers. The same unearthly beings that killed their son and tore their once happy family apart. They are the gravest threat the world has ever known. It appears the memories saved in these scarecrows are from a world whose people do not know freedom. How terribly suffocating. A world without freedom? So the world has a collar like I do? Well, it does not actually have a collar. I wish I could have happy dreams. Maybe one about cute clothes or pretty jewelry. Or a cake that never runs out. Or my mommy's stew. A dead end. Hmm, whatever shall we do? Aha, <laughs> it was actually a warp point. Clever, no? What a convenient world we live in, wouldn't you say? number three at last. Prisoners are transported in cramped, stuffy containers, as if they were mere cargo. The flower threat has forced the government to conscript civilians 
as soldiers. The man and his wife are no exception to this rule. Prisoners charge the mass of flowers, intent on eliminating them. Another day, another battle, a common sight. But this time, they discover a larger, more sinister flower than any they have yet seen. Just when all hope seems lost, their allies come to the rescue. They cannot even thank them by name, for they are known only by letters and numbers. But somehow they have a greater sense of solidarity than when they had been free. Or so they had thought. Done, though I do wonder what happened to those prisoners. Did someone get hurt again? Don't trouble yourself too much about it, young miss. Our memory restoration is proceeding rather smoothly, don't you think? restoration will be tonight's last, so let's pick up the pace. Okay. I must say, I've never met a human who saw weapon memories as dreams. So, I'm weird? Of of course not. You are a most valuable set uh, uh, client. Yes, that's it. Mr. Monster? Are they yummy? 
I'm sorry if they're not. Oh, we're in the home stretch now. Let's go. Good luck, Mr. Monster. Their fellow prisoners remained frozen in place, like a people somehow out of time. The man and his wife look on, trying desperately to make sense of what is happening. Suddenly, the prisoners begin to march, their footsteps all in perfect sync. The man and his wife behold a sight most uncanny. Without a word, the prisoners begin to throw themselves into the depths below. The man and his wife prove no match for their fellows. The officer begins to tell them about the strategy they use to fight the flowers. Though strategy is a kind word for it, experiment is far more appropriate. Data from the prisoners' battles with the flowers is recorded and analyzed. Any found wanting, or any who exhibit a sense of self, are determined to be defective, and are disposed of by the organization. When the man awakens, he sees his fellow prisoners. He is the only survivor. This is unforgivable. 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 In the depths of the earth, the man emits a roar of pain. To think he lost not only his child, but his wife as well. Such sadness could scarce be described with words. At any rate, this concludes tonight's memory restoration. And now, the moment you've been waiting for, dream time! Eat the nightmares before our young miss here wakes up. You will need to consume many more dreams if you wish to become human, you know. Oh, 
my, it's almost time for our young miss here to wake up. I had lots of fun today. See you tomorrow, Mr. Monster. Let us be on our way as well. Is it now? Look over there if you would be so kind. After you! Let us proceed to the young Mrs. Dreams of tomorrow. Oh, but this is exciting! And, ah yes, there we are. Hello, Mr. Monster. I didn't have any dreams last night. Such is the power of a dream eater. He dined quite well. Oh, yes. I'm excited for today, too. What might you need? Indeed, one might even call it my workplace. Not to boast, but I received the Performance MVP Award for this past year. Such a harsh response. Now then, let us get to restoring tonight's memories. The path that was shown descended endlessly. Human stories are filled with obsession, jealousy, hatred, grudges, and hypocrisy. However commonplace and boring an observation it may be, humans can seemingly only find themselves in interactions with others. And those were also the girl's nightmares. She showed restlessness, sympathy, dread, and grief at every twist and turn. And I saw her as an innocent little creature. A creature of the exact opposite of myself. I felt not so much disgust, but fear. Fear that I had somehow taken an interest in this pure girl. I hope the dream isn't scary. The woman wakes in a dark and crumbling place. Pain races through her body. She thought she would die when she saved her husband from the commander. Yet she is still alive. But why? Trying to make sense of her piecemeal memories, she starts walking. 
Her location is a mystery. Eventually, she discovers people clad in the same clothing as her, collapsed among some rubble. Suddenly, her husband appears, along with some of her old fellow prisoners. The joy they feel in this moment is beyond all measure. Welcome back! Did you have fun? It seems to be a continuation of yesterday's dream. The one about the man who lost his family? The very same, although happily it seems the wife had survived. Yay! Mr. Monster, do you have any siblings? I'm an only child, and I'd do anything to have a brother or sister. So, um, do you have a favorite food? My mommy makes yummy stew. Do you like stew? The woman is brought to a base for former prisoners.
pain shoots through her head. She can't remember anything after being separated from her husband. As part of their resistance to the organization, the defectives had been plotting ways to free their fellow prisoners. The organization had ordered the prisoners to hunt down the escaped defectives. It seems this story will not end happily after all. Your favorite food, Carrie? I love nothing more than a heaping plate of dried and salted fish eggs. Blech. It may be something of an acquired taste. Perhaps you need to be older to enjoy it. Have you had salty fish eggs, Mr. Monster? <laughs> <laughs> that means you're a kid, too. Despite the organization's orders, the defective prisoners have a plan. During the next flower attack, they will sneak into the organization's HQ. Once there, they will free all the remaining prisoners in one fell swoop. Acting as an advanced scout team, the man and his wife enter the HQ. They had spent so much of their lives here. But this was the first time they were able to move about of their own volition. They had trained here for days without end. All so they could exact revenge on the flowers that stole their son. Everyone here was the same. They all had a reason to want the flowers dead. But in that case, why were they shackled by so many unnecessary rules? In all of their time here, they had never stopped to wonder why this was.
This is the first time either of them has ever set foot in the incubation room. Sleeping prisoners float peacefully inside liquid-filled capsules. The commander begins to tell his tale. Humans, true humans, no longer exist. You prisoners are nothing but clones, pale imitations. And in order to give you a reason to fight, we implanted you with memories. Their pain, their desire for revenge, it all stemmed from their son's death. Human clones, oh dear. What's a clone? It might be a touch difficult for you to understand, young miss. Is that a moose? That is a cursed god. It being in this part of the cage brings wickedness. I have heard that some even pray to those cursed gods. How terribly dreadful. Is it a bad moose? Oh yes, it has a grisly face and likes to appear right in front of you. And that's bad? Color me impressed that you did not flinch in the face of the cursed god. Were you scared, Carrie? I, uh, uh yes.
Memory. Remember. 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 False. False. Memory. False. Remember. Memory. False. Kill the enemy. Kill your loved one. As she clings to her fading will, she makes a decision. She remembers a process the Commander installed in her the first time she died. A setting that deletes even her false self, making her a mindless weapon of carnage. Sacrificial death confirmed. Cause, marital bonds. Data saved as reference for future clone development. Test concluded. Death born from love for her partner. There is a very fine line between joy and misery. In any case, it is now the moment you have been waiting for. Dream time! It seems it is almost morning in the other world. Thank you. And, um, I wish we could have adventured more together. We shall meet again once night falls. Come now. Let us be off. You've grown used to gathering dreams, haven't you? Well, let's keep up the pace. And there we are. Pardon me, you two, but I fear management has given me something of a sudden summoning. Might it be all right if a substitute took care of you today? Ah, speak of the Dickens. Here comes the substitute now. Nice to uh, make it quite, uh... Worry not. 
I shall be returned before you know it. Ta! about my dream from last night. You really are amazing, Mr. Monster. boy lives in a country that has been beset by a long, drawn-out war. Each night, gunfire erupts and stirs his anxiety. Frightened, he heads to the living room to be with his parents. His mother's smile always manages to cheer the boy up. Though he is a coward at heart, he says this for the sake of his beloved mother. One day I'll be a soldier and keep you safe, Mom. His mother breaks into a wide, happy smile at his words. Suddenly, there is a loud noise from the entrance to the home. His parents scream for a long, agonizing moment. And then they fall silent. The enemy soldier overlooks the boy and leaves. He nervously makes his way to the corridor, where he'd heard his parents' terrible screams. <sighs> he finds the corpses of his parents cooling on the floor. He inches closer and examines the sword that is impaled in his father's still form. 
It is decorated with a distinctive emblem. The boy crumples to the floor and begins to sob as shame at his weakness overwhelms him. Even now, the thought of the enemy he saw from the closet makes him go weak in the knees. He is a coward, a craven, a sniveling child who had been unable to act. Is it another bad dream? Fun, Mr. Monster. <laughs> Is this making you dizzy? Years pass. The boy that lost his parents has become a soldier. He did so for one reason. To find the man who ruined his life and kill him. Once afraid, the boy is now possessed by naught but pure, unyielding vengeance. The other troops often single out the unsociable boy. The boy stares back at the soldier before him. The coward he once was is now a distant stranger. Their captain steps in to stop the quarrel. But rather than look at him, the boy turns away. Though a captain, the man is rather soft and weak-willed. When the boy looks at him, it is like looking at the coward he once was. Turning his back on his caring captain, the boy departs. said it's bad. I wonder where K 
Harry went. The next day, the soldiers are briefed on their upcoming operation. Each one of them receives a set of materials. When the boy looks at the documents, a terrifying smile slowly emerges on his face. For on the first page is the same emblem that was on the sword all those years ago. His sworn enemy is close now, so very close. The boy feels his blood begin to boil as he considers this. Then he slowly makes his way to the captain. There is a man among our foes, the same man who killed my parents. I owe this man. The debt must be paid. Put me in the front line so I may take his life. Enraged, the boy draws his weapon and moves to attack his own captain. Though the other man quakes in fear, he does not rescind from his previous order. The boy hurls abuse at the timid man as he sheaths his weapon and departs. As the other soldiers sleep, the boy stirs. If he can't get permission, he will simply act alone. It is the same burly soldier who always tries to fight him. The boy lies. Though this soldier usually irritates him, today he pays him no mind. Instead, he bends all his thought on the man who took his parents from him. He has killed him over and over in his imagination. But now... Entering the chest river. Reckless.
do you want to be human, Mr. Monster? Ah, instinct, huh? When I grow up, I have an instinct to be a ballerina. I've wanted to be one ever since I read a picture book about ballerinas. Do you think I can be one? The boy infiltrates the enemy camp just before daybreak. The rows of tents are silent in the shadow of dawn. A small fire burns in a tent deep within the camp, and he senses the presence of an enemy. It's him. As hatred flares inside him, the boy strikes at the man with all of his might. Lying on death's door, the enemy soldier says his piece. He tells the boy the truth of that fateful night. He was not a random soldier, but the boy's own father. The couple were not his parents, but brigands who stole him from the cradle. With a trembling hand, the man hands the boy a small notebook before breathing his last. In it, he learns his home country ran a kidnapping scheme targeting infants. Glued within the pages are multiple pictures of the couple who raised him. His parents are a sin, his life a sham. He has devoted his existence to nothing. The battlefield lies in a cold, hollow silence as the sun slowly begins to rise.
It's a uh, time for a good night dream. returned. Terribly sorry to have caused you so much trouble. It's always such a shock to be called in on short notice like that. I do wish they would find a different way. Let's play again sometime, Tootie. Yeah. I wish I could stay here forever. I doubt that is possible, milady. You are not part of this world, you see. <laughs> now then, there we go. I'll be right back, so just wait. Okay, Mr. Monster? You too, Carrie. <laughs> Now, let us proceed onward. Briskly now, friends, briskly! So it's nighttime here, too. Yes, it does indeed seem that way sometimes. Trouble? Now let us begin with this dark scarecrow. Timid military captain lives in a nation where wars rage without pause. His frequent retreats have caused his men to nickname him Captain Craven. This morning, he walks around the base and orders his men to prepare for combat. himself mediating quarrels among his hot-blooded men. And yet, he never treats them as anything other than his trusted fellows. Mm -hmm. 
After finishing his rounds, the captain restores a temporary discipline. Earlier, a young boy had volunteered for combat so he could avenge his parents. But concerned for the boy's well-being, the captain had turned down his proposal. Dark clouds gather as they ready for combat, matching the captain's mood. substitute said these are stories of war related to last night's dreams. Mm, stories of war, huh? soldiers came to the village so me and my mommy were gonna escape but I got lost <laughs> heavens I believe this child was chased here from inside the scarecrow <laughs> it appears so though I imagine it to be a rather rare occurrence <laughs> I want my mommy <laughs> Can you go find his mommy in the Scarecrow, Mr. Monster? Please? You will be entering the Dark Scarecrows regardless, so I suppose it could not hurt to search for the missing mother as well.
with several units in tow, the captain and his army marched for the enemy camp. Their goal is to annihilate the enemy, and if possible, locate the missing boy. As always, his orders are cautious. The safety of his men is overriding concern. nowhere to be found, and the captain knows he is in grave danger. He stares at the scene before him and whispers, have I failed again? Did you find the boy's mommy? Hmm. Hey, why don't you come with us so we can look for your mommy together? Okay. I'll go with you. Thanks. Yay! He's coming with us, Mr. Monster. Isn't that great? So the woman inside the Scarecrow who died while searching for her son. That was the boy's missing mother, yes? If I may, why do you not tell him the truth?
an enemy from within the Dark Scarecrow? My son. Where is my son? <clears throat> She have been... That's... No! That wasn't my mommy! Could you search the Scarecrow again, Mr. Monster? <laughs> Years ago... The cowardly captain was but a meager foot soldier. He possessed the arrogance of youth and often butted heads with his commanders. After one intense battle, he found himself searching for any surviving comrades. corpse he found was a senior officer who used to bark orders at him. The next, a fellow soldier with whom he often fought. He had done this. He had ignored orders and brought his squadron to ruin. As he cursed himself, he found a survivor, an officer whom he had often mocked. The officer closed his eyes, let out a final blackened breath, and died. I'm glad you survived. Those words would haunt the young soldier for the rest of his days. Eight years later, though fearful at the thought of losing his men, he continued on as a soldier. He now attempts to atone for his mistakes by ensuring no one else has to die. some eight years ago. I will do whatever I must to save him. With that thought in mind, the captain reaches down for the injured boy. Did you find her, Mr. Monster? I'm gonna wait here for my mommy. But it's not safe. What if those nasty dark things come back? If I leave, my mommy won't be able to find me. Okay. I understand. Thank you. Bye, Mr. Monster. You were unable to tell him the truth, it seems.
No. Um, so the next dream is the last one, right? Don't be daft. The act of having dreams eaten has no physical effect on a person. I'm okay. Don't worry. This is tonight's final Scarecrow. One cannot help but wonder what will become of the boy and the captain. The captain hauls the boy onto his back and starts making his return to the base. Despite the danger, he continues issuing orders remotely as they travel. He will not rest until every last one of his men is seen safely out of harm's way. Suddenly, the boy on his back emits a small groan. In a thin voice, he admits his error and apologizes for his selfish actions. Though he managed to save the boy, the captain has taken a most grievous wound. If another enemy were to find them now, he likely will not be able to fend them off. Pushing aside the pain, he continues his march. The captain is reaching his physical limit. He will leave no man behind. He will let no man die. It is a naive belief, yet it keeps him going. Soon, Another enemy force appears to bar their way. The captain stares them down, placing his own body between them and his young charge. Suddenly, the rest of his squad appears. Breaths are held, fingers lie tense on weapons. One false move will mean a slaughter. Finally, after a long moment, the enemy retreats. The squad had come to their captain's aid. Miraculously, they have all survived the mission.
with his eyelids heavy, he murmurs to the boy, I'm glad you survived. His men, the family he built at the cost of his pride, have saved him. They pick the boy up and begin to tease him, saying he's lucky to be alive. The boy responds with a dry smile, the first time any of them remember him doing so. The sound of their laughter rings out happily across the desolate battlefield. word, a happy ending. How terribly unusual. It's good to see the captain's wish to not let anyone die seems to have prevailed. And now for our favorite event, dream time. Hmm. I fear something in the other world may be causing her to weaken. No need to worry about that, hmm? It's not as if it affects you. Tomorrow. You shall feast on her dreams and take another step in your quest to become human. Now let us proceed to the next part of the cage. Quickly now! And here we go. Yes, Mr. Monster. I'm sorry for worrying you. Now let us make our pilgrimage to each dark scarecrow with gusto. Playing it? I fear we've no time to spare for splashing about, young miss. You have eaten quite a lot of the young miss's dreams. I believe the day you become human is nigh.
a girl awakens to find her mind a perfect blank. She knows not where she is, who she is. She does not even know if these are questions worth asking. Then, she hears a voice, almost a faint scream. I must go there. She knows not where there is, yet she begins to walk all the same. She moves down the corridor as if the voice drives her. Along the path, she finds a large crystal in the shape of a person. Her hand, acting of its own accord, reaches out for the strange object. Images flood her mind, memories left within the crystal. And through these memories, she suddenly understands. This crystal is the corpse of a girl. A girl of the same type as herself. We were created to be weapons. slithers from the soles of her feet. A white aberration appears, its state of matter undefined. Sensing its hostility, the girl's eyes turn red. dispatches the white creature. She fought with such agility, it seems impossible to think she is so newly awakened. Her composure flawless, the girl continues down the hall. The voice in her head drives her on relentlessly. She finds herself in a darkness devoid of life. Yet she continues on in search of answers. Ah, so this is the tale of a girl created to be a weapon. It ran off. I uh, fear I have never seen a scarecrow take flight in such a fashion before. It would seem they are capable of moving. even certain you can kill it. It's made of a very strange substance. Oh, at last! 
The girl traverses a corridor filled with rubble. A fight happened here. She spies a faint light filtering in through the collapsed ceiling. The girl climbs the rubble, seeking the light's source. Having climbed the wreckage, she spies row upon row of living plants. The light spilling into the corridor below had been for their benefit. Enraptured at the sight of the plants, the girl is suddenly beset by a terrible vertigo. Her vision spins. Her mind reels. But she somehow manages to brush these feelings aside and continue her journey. once again appears to block her progress. She stares down her enemy with red eyes and utterly flawless composure. The white phantom evaporates like so much mist. These corpses were weapons like her. She might have even called them her sisters. She holds up a hand to the crystal and closes her eyes. A torrent of images race forth and swallow the girl's consciousness. They are memories. They are horrible. Girls, her sisters, overrun by a horde of aberrations. Their pain and agony floods through her mind. The white aberrations brought ruin to the facility.
Having inherited the memories, the girl moves on. She must learn more. She must appease the voice in her head. Interesting. So this girl, this living weapon, goes about collecting memories, hmm? Are you certain we have the time to dawdle like this? You don't say... Hmm? Hey, Mr. Monster? When you become human, will you still be my friend? Right then, that's the end of playtime. Time to be moving on. I see the next scarecrow. Go there. The voice in her head leads the way once more.
vibration strong enough to shake the floor. Something had roared. The sound came from the space just ahead of her. A glowing terminal stands before a dividing wall. She knows what this is. More precisely, her inherited memories know it. They know she needs a key in order to make this device open the wall beyond. She begins to search. Reasons beyond knowing, a monster appears before the girl a third time. She grips her spear tightly, red eyes shining out from her impassive face. Stale air spills out from the other side of the door. It is an elevator. Hearing it creak to life, the girl closes her eyes. Illuminated in crimson, the room is enveloped in an odd atmosphere. The device in the middle of the room is filled with shimmering liquid. Suspended in the flux, is an oddly shaped spear. beside a small piece of paper. She knows it is the key that opens the wall and takes it.
memory she receives is of the beginning. The first of the Living Weapon Sisters. The eldest of her sisters had lost control and birthed the aberrations. This was the cause of the facility's destruction. The memories tie together. She feels her sister's emotions race through her. Enduring the flood of images, she presses on. She now understands that her eldest sister still suffers. You must be close to consuming the required amount of dreams. I doubt there's any problem here. Carry on, my good man. Monster. I'm gonna be really happy when your wish comes true. Yeah, because when you're happy, I'm happy, and then we're all happy together. That's uh, well, my teacher says, anyway. She continues to move down the long and winding path. She knows the answers she seeks are waiting for her somewhere up ahead. And that her sister is waiting as well. she enters the room, she spies a massive something at its heart. 
It is the leader of the aberrations. But it is more than that. It is also her older sister. The one who lost control. Her eldest sister spreads her white wings and howls in a ferocious voice. This cry of enmity toward the world shakes the entire facility to its foundation. Her body falls to the floor. The sister's duel is over. As her elder transforms into crystal, the girl slowly brings up her hand. Her sister's memories race through her like a tide. She sees it then, the place she must go. It was a precious place to the older sister when she was still human. Plucking her sister's sword from the floor, she whispers, Leave all to me. She makes her way to the outside world, toward the place of memory. Though she sets off from her place of birth alone, she carries the hopes and dreams of all her sisters on her shoulders. That certainly was a tale of a very strange world. It's almost time! Yeah... I have to go. But... My mommy might be waiting for me.
Now let's get to devouring dreams for the night, shall we? No need to worry, my hungry friend. You'll see her in two shakes of a scarecrow's tail. It seems our young miss is rather busy over in the other world. Easy now. No need to rush things, hmm? Luckily for you, I already have a plan in place for just such an occasion. Tonight, you will be restoring... the young Mrs. Tail of her life in the other world! I know, I am just ever so clever. Oh, and this is the final step in order for you to turn human. Bit of good news there, eh? I'll be waiting right here. Much luck! Ta! Constantly, ever since her father lost his job. When the squabbling starts, the girl leaves her home and wanders aimlessly. Her country's ruling class maintains a strict order of laws and mobility. Below nobles are the commoners, and below them are goat people. By creating a class for commoners to look down upon, the nobles suppress dissent. In fact, the girl's father lost his job when a commoner claimed it for his own. The girl eventually finds herself standing in front of a magnificent building. It is the assembly hall from which the nobility rule their great democracy. If I ask real nice, maybe they'll give my daddy his old job back. It is the thought of a child. But as she knows no better, she enters the hall.
They didn't listen to her. Why would they? What did you think of the young Mrs. Reality? It's good to have a goal. And yes, you'll be human soon, so no worries there. too caught up in details. Onward and upward is the way of it. Is our next stop. I do hope our young miss is hanging in there. The next day, the girl's father leaves their home and doesn't return. Worried, she decides to go look for him. Her father used to be employed as a town guard. But after becoming a goat, his job was taken away. day, he decided to make his way to the barracks and ask for his job back. If not his old job, any work would do. He was not too proud to take on menial tasks. her father being beaten by his former friends and co-workers.
The girl's father is still. He no longer draws breath. Sensing she might be next, the girl takes heel and runs. I have to tell mommy. As she bursts through the door, she finds her mother in the arms of a stranger. Through her sobs, she manages to tell her mother what has occurred at the barracks. The girl doesn't understand. Her mother seems... happy. girl finds the house deserted. She waits and waits, but her mother does not return. Dear me, it seems reality is quite the harsh mistress, no matter the world, eh? By the by, what exactly are you planning to do once you become human? I've not had a raise in years, you see, and haven't even taken a holiday. My wife nags and nags, my elderly parents need care. I'm swamped with worries! <sighs> the next dark scarecrow is just up ahead. You should see it there. I wonder what fate awaits her now that she has lost both of her parents. around the town in a daze. She knows in her heart that no adult will help her. Yet she is still too young to grasp the reality of what that actually means. And so she wanders, searching fruitlessly for even the smallest ray of kindness. for a day, she stops at a stand and gazes longingly at an apple. friend with whom she used to be quite close. The girl freezes, caught between her desperation and her disgrace. Understand the depths of her loss. Her 
her status had taken not only her parents, but her friends. Yes, yes, how lovely. to run that little request by management, I'm afraid. Right you are. Let's get you turned into a human. Goodness me, for a short journey, this has seemed so very long, yes? I am beset by sadness to think my contract with you will soon expire. This is the final Dark Scarecrow of our young Mrs. Reality. The following day, the hungry girl hears loud noises coming from somewhere outside. Workers have gathered in the yard and are beginning to demolish her home. Apparently, they have orders to turn the land into the local garbage dump. And so, the girl is driven from her home with only the clothes on her back. She knows she needs to find a place where she can shelter from the elements. Her feet unconsciously carry her toward an old ruin far, far away from her home. It is worn, dirty, abandoned, and yet she has always loved the place and played there often in better days. As she walks, she ponders the ways of the world. Why do people stare when they see someone beneath their own station? And why do they look so happy? Because they always break out in huge, happy grins. They all look like the smiles of a madman. No matter how hard she thinks, the answer eludes her. Deep within the ruin, she finds three figures. There is 
is no one left who will even bother to care for her. Heavens, that's no good. The poor thing collapsed. Ah, but no need to break out your mourning veil. She's not dead quite yet. Luckily, we are just in the nick of time. Right then. Now, as promised... Why, I never lied to you, my friend. I've kept each and every promise I made. And on that note, let me remind you. You're the freaking jackass who wanted to be human. Fool out of me? Out of me? All we did was help you! <laughs> so this is the power of rejection that management gave me! You're such an idiot! Why can't you just be happy becoming human? Well, nothing for it, I guess. This means those imperfections of yours got taken advantage of. That, my stupid friend, is for me to know, and you not to find out. And what would you do with that information if I told you, huh? Isn't it about time you give up? Because if I do, the path closes up on me. You don't need to worry about that, though. Tell you what, let me give you a little nugget to chew on. I've got orders to meddle in this world. And those orders come from an absolute feeling. Wait, my rejection, it's coming undone! Don't tell me management has... Bloody hell, I said too much! Don't let up. Killing me ain't gonna solve... Oh dear, Mr. Former Monster. You seem troubled. There, there. Mama's not your enemy. 
In fact, I might just be the savior you're looking for. I think I know a way to return that poor child to her original form. Oh, I'm afraid it's going to require you to become much, much stronger. In fact, you'll need to do what you have been doing all over again. You need to collect more dreams, dear. And to do that, we must retrace our steps through the cage. But I'm afraid this all comes at a cost. You're going to lose your voice, your senses, your... Are you certain? Keep going straight. At the end, you will have what you desire. Mama knows the rules that govern this place. You have atoned well, and that means your wish is certain to come true. There she is. Didn't get to be human, Mr. Monster? It is. All right. Then, let's play together again sometime. Of course. Well, did all of your wishes come true? At long last, their memories have been restored.
Mama has a little gift for you. Thank you so much. You've been quite the help. Still, restoring the tales of both Fio and Lavania has been difficult work for poor Mama. Both of their memories were so broken. That was a close one. Honestly, it was such a tough job. I wish I'd had another me to help out. But I believe they will both be able to sleep peacefully now. Indeed. Yet I'm afraid we aren't done. We must gather all the stories. <laughs>